Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Something wildly different, isn't it? Stop, wait, Lawrence. Hi, he's almost at 500k. Um, I'm a huge Lawrence fan. Uh, and Lost in the Pond, great channel. He was one of the reasons why I I wanted to... Of course, he doesn't do reaction content. He creates his own content, you know? Um, and I, I always love watching his videos because I loved seeing a British person's perspective on American life and the differences. And there was no better person to hear it from than someone who had mar is married to... Has a an American wife and has lived, I think, nearly the same amount of time as in the UK and America. Maybe not, but he, he's definitely over a decade here. Um, and it's just, I'm. Uh, this is the one channel that I just, I, I'm so excited to hear that it's getting a lot of subscribers. So I would recommend subscribing to his channel. Preemptive like. Um, yeah, I started watching him years ago when he was like below 50K and was just pumping out the content. Love them. Let's do it. My name's Connor, guys. Uh, I'm experimenting with the uh, iPhone headphones. Um, yeah, let's do it. Uh, the original link to this video, top of the description, below that link to the Discord. Click on it. Send right over there. Love to have you. Let's learn about the differences of British and American grocery stores. So next time you're in the other country, why not play a game of, oh, look, right. it's that thing we have back home, but they call it something wildly different. Isn't this fun? Aubergine. Freaking Hello. taxes. Add the tax to the final price. Isn't this fun? Hello, I'm Lawrence, and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond. And one of those memos pertains to grocery stores, or should I say supermarkets, because that's what we call them in the UK. Weirdly, I've been doing this channel now for about nearly five years, and uh, I don't think I've really ever touched on the major differences between grocery stores and supermarkets. That is probably because the nauseating experience of walking around said stores is second only to malls. I'll be honest with you, we, we get our shopping delivered haven't had to walk into a grocery store in about three years but i did do some research so it's fine and so without further ado let's take a look at five big ways that british and american grocery stores slash supermarkets are so very very i hope different. he touches on the tax that's not added Yes, layout. As you can probably yeah, imagine, man. the layout of American grocery stores tends to be slightly different to that of Britain. But that makes sense. I mean, the United States itself is laid out quite differently to Britain. I don't just mean it's a different shape. I mean... I thought I had to sneeze. It's itself is laid out quite differently okay. to Britain. I don't just mean it's a different shape. I mean, it incorporates different shapes. I did a video on this. Basically, America is obsessed with rectangles. Anyway, that's not connected to today's video. I think this difference might have changed a little bit in recent years. For instance, it's a common practice in both countries now to put the fresh veg right near the entrance section to give this illusion of health as you walk in and then you walk over to the chocolate and everything falls apart. But other than that, as you're walking around the stores in both countries, you will see the odd difference sometimes very odd difference. So for instance, in some British grocery stores slash supermarkets, you know, you might find the eggs not in the dairy section. What's that all about? And since I've moved to America, that seems to make sense, right? It's with the cheese, it's with the, the milk, the, the whipped cream. And sort of genre-wise, that, that does make sense. But sometimes you will find things like eggs uh, just, you know, hanging around with the beans in England and not refrigerated either. That's, that's a shocking thing for a lot of Americans when they see that. Isn't it because like a lot of food in America compared to Europe that you guys just have generally, generally, oh, sorry. The wine. Let me give Lawrence a better pause, more flattering. Um, that you, like, you guys have better health standards with your eggs, and so... You, you, you don't have to refrigerate them. Section might be found in a different spot to where you'd find it in US grocery stores. Across both countries though, it's always gonna differ, especially depending on the actual store itself. So keep an eye out for that. And kind of connected to layout is our next entry. 
I've said it before and I'll say it again, size is not everything, though you probably wouldn't believe that if you saw the difference between UK supermarkets and American grocery stores. I used to think as a kid that whenever my mum would drag me around Asda, which is one of our major supermarkets, that that particular supermarket was absolutely huge. Go to and Sam's then I moved Club. to America and I was equally dragged around Walmart. And in recent years, the comparison between the two has become quite apt and that is because Walmart owns Asda. But the fact remains that Asda, most of them anyway, are not located within their own zip code, postcode. Whereas Walmart, it might as well have its own zip code. They're absolutely huge. They're so large, in fact, that just walking around the perimeter is enough for your weekly exercise which I suppose is good considering all of the calories that you're about to buy. And because Walmart and to a lesser extent Kroger are absolutely massive, that means you have the following. In the United Kingdom, nationwide, you've got the likes of Sainsbury's, Tesco, Morrison's, Asda. So we have choice in that regard, but once you get inside the stores, we probably don't have quite as much to offer as the United States, who, for instance, provide you with about 27 varieties of Coca-Cola. I haven't tried them all. In fact, I've barely tried any of them, but the rule seems to be that the brighter the packaging, the more varieties there'll be, and also the brighter the packaging, the least healthier it'll be. So to reiterate, American Isles have more variety than British Isles. <laughs> That was a joke. Wordplay. British Isles. You got it. We're good. Ah. Walmart has such variety. You can even buy auto parts. They're usually at the back of the store, which is not the best place between you and me, because what if you're buying a big, hefty tire? How are you going to get that out? Well, I, I wouldn't consider Walmart a grocery store or a supermarket, which, by the way, I'd say that we use supermarket about as the same amount as we use grocery store. Um, it's kind of like autumn and fall that we use interchangeably, but I definitely wouldn't consider uh, Walmart a supermarket. Um, maybe that's just me. I'm only one American. Um, but when I think of a supermarket, I think of a Shaw's or a Stop and Shop. Um, maybe a Sam's Club for like big bulk purchases. But Walmart is is something where, yeah, they'll have grocery stuff, but they'll also have like kids toys and clothing and video game stuff and flat screen TVs and and everything so and they'll have a garden section you could roll it that's true in fact that sounds amazing i might do that next time i'm in wall roll it that's between you and me because what have you bought oh the the wheel buying a big hefty tire how are you going to get that out you could roll it that's true in fact that sounds amazing i might do that next time i'm in Walmart, I've just remembered, I'm never going back in a Walmart, so we're good. And I don't drive. And speaking of purchases, really? once you get to the till slash cash register, there's another chief difference between our two countries. Yeah, freaking taxes, say it. Oh. And, and my freaking thing came out. Man, I, this bugs the crap out of me, because for a second I'm like, oh, maybe it's a little more effort. No, but sales tax doesn't change that often, and it's the most annoying thing in America um, that, like, why not just include it? There's no reason not to, and it's just frustrating as hell. I have to admit, this one got me long before I moved to the United States when I was visiting the state of Maine in 2004. Hey, I New walked England. into a music shop, as you do. I much prefer music shops to supermarkets anyway. And I purchased a ukulele. I think I talked about this very recently. And in doing so, of course, I looked at the price. $15, which is cheap. For I mean, don't ever do that again. That'll be it was 20. good while it lasted, but it didn't didn't last very long. So I took it to the counter expecting to pay exactly that in, in three $5 bills, only to be told, you know, $17.32. I mean, I'm making that number up in hindsight. I didn't really get where that additional $2 came from. And it turns out that sales tax is applied at the point of sale. Whereas in the United Kingdom, what you see on the price tag in the aisle itself is exactly what you'll pay for that item. So there's no surprises when you get to the till. I should say that, you know, I think in England, even when I'd go grocery shopping, I didn't, I didn't calculate in my head each item as I went along so I never really had a great idea about what that total was going to be anyway um it's usually when you're just purchasing single items fair yeah uh, yeah but in single yeah okay items, this problem first arises but anybody that's visiting America from the UK who usually doesn't give a second thought to VAT you will have to give thought to sales tax which is kind of the equivalent here of VAT and like I said that sales tax is not applied to the whole store before you even go in you'll see it applied to your receipt 
after the fact. It's not a huge deal. I got used to it. Yes, you know, it is. After a couple of years. Um, one thing I'm still getting used to, though, is our final entry. $5 foot long. Remember that? Subway? No, 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 no. That's a $7.36 foot long with no toppings. Yes, brand differences. And I'm not talking about, you know, this particular brand Adidas. that you simply can't get an equivalent of in the UK. No, I'm talking about the exact same object or typically food item that has the same font and everything and look about it, but a completely different name. Take, for instance, Axe versus Liggs. They're deodorants. Don't eat them. I'm not suggesting these are all food items, but uh, if you are a 14-year-old boy, you know what Axe deodorant is or links. They are exactly the same thing. They both have an X in it, much like an inordinate amount of brand differences, actually. You've got TJ Maxx versus TK Maxx. You've got ExxonMobil versus Esso. You've got Dove versus Galaxy. Alexa, what are they going to change your name to? I don't, I don't have Alexa. That was just a joke. But if you're from the US and you go over to the UK and you're walking around the shopping aisles and you're looking out for crisps slash potato chips and you see one that looks a little bit like Lay's, you know, Lay's, the American crisps company, um, it'll be called Walker's but it has the exact same font. Everything else about it is the same, except for some of the flavors, bear that in mind. And some of the chocolate seems to live in- Isn't, uh, Aus isn't Australian McDonald's called Macca's? is the same, except for some of the flavors, bear that in mind. And some of the chocolate seems to live in an entirely different universe, literally in some cases, like I said before. The British Galaxy Bar is Dove in America, um, Milky Way is Three Musketeers, and Mars, is Milky Way. It's all one s Milky Way and is three musketeers. Well, that's not a Milky Way. Oh, this is a Milky Way. In I'm I'm dumb. Sorry. This is a Milky Way. Okay, so three musketeers in the US is called a Milky Way there. Okay. Milky Way it's like Three Musketeers, Milky Way, and Snickers are like all the same uh, chocolate bar. It's just Three Musketeers has only nougat. Milky Way has nougat and caramel. And then N Snickers has nougat, caramel, and peanuts. Um, Milky Way is Three Musketeers, and Mars is Milky Way. It it's all one star cluster of monumental differences. And of course, there are absolutely loads. So next time you're in the other country, why not play a game of, oh, look, it's that thing we have back home, but they call it something wildly different. Isn't this fun? You know, you might get bored after a while, but send me your pictures. It will be amazing. That's it for this episode. Let me know in the comments below some of the observations you've made over the differences between a British supermarket and an American grocery store. In the meantime, if you haven't had the chance to do so, please subscribe to my channel so that my videos don't get lost in the pond. And a big shout out to all my patrons, without whom none of this would be possible, from the writing to the research to the exercise in Walmart. If you would like to become a patron of Lost in the Pond, you can do so at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. And of course, anybody that does so will get access to my secret weekly live stream. And anybody that pledges $5 or more a month will get access to not only that, but my secret podcast and more. Until next time, happy shopping. Bye. Uh, I love him. I love him. It's not weird. Uh, I don't know. I just can't get enough joy out of out of seeing him at almost a half a million. Um, really good video, guys. I highly recommend. Uh, if you like the kind of British America, America British kind of compare contrast content, no better place to go. He's uh, uh fantastic. All right, guys. My name is Connor. Hit the subscribe button if you would like to keep watching things with me. Uh, you don't have to hit the bell button, okay? I, I put out a lot of videos. I, I would actually ask you not to press the bell button, all right? Um, so that you don't get, like, flooded with videos of mine that you, that you don't care about. But definitely subscribe, okay? That probably wasn't the best business pitch, huh? Love you guys. See you guys next time.